So good morning, good morning, good morning. I hope you can hear me. I'm not sure that it's all going to come out. Every week is another thing, right? Good morning. My name is Bonnie Sachs, and I am the author of the Health and Happiness Guide to the Universal Laws. And this is my happy half hour that I do every Monday morning. And I am very excited to be here again to chat about um, lies, lies, lies. And it's probably not what you think. And that is always really interesting because, um, you know, we have loads of things in our life that are not really what we think, right? We just move around, move through our lives thinking that this is what our life looks like. And then suddenly we have a mirror that pops up and we're not too sure that that is really what our life looks like. So um, I guess we're going to play this game again where no one is showing up on my screen. And I'll just say good morning to all of you. And if it decides to pop up, I'll be able to say good morning specifically. But otherwise, we are just going to have an interesting conversation today about lies. So as all of you probably know I walk every morning and for the last couple of weeks I have been hearing that I need to listen to the book of freedom and before that it was the book of truth this is actually the book of freedom and it is by an author named Paul Selig and it is just a really interesting book to me because the book is paralleling my life and the questions that I have about what is going on in the world and how things um, how things show up in my life. And this morning is absolutely no different. I was um, moving along in my in my walk, just listening to the book, and the very first thing that came up. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Robin. I heard, look at your phone. I'm like, okay, I'll look at my phone. Jill, Aaron, um, Elaine, and Regina are watching. So um, thanks, Robin. I appreciate that. It's so very funny to be just moving along and suddenly here, look at your phone. Well, that's really rude. I'm in the middle of a conversation, but I guess that was important to know. So I have been asking this question about how we show up in the world, right? How we show up and, um, and, and why we show up a certain way. Like, why is there this dilemma with us? Like, there is the, the um, soul or the true self, the divine self, the Christ itself, all of those words, the I am presence. There's a lot of ways to, to say the the um, soul that shows up that we are here having an incarnation in a in a body, but we're like all walking around like having no idea that that's what we are, that that's who we are, that that's what we're here to do. Now that is hilarious because I'm three minutes in and poof, everybody shows up. See, I now see Elaine and everybody. So good morning. It's nice to see you all. It literally just says, okay, now we'll show up. Um, Jill and David and Gretchen, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's really great to see you. I guess there must be some sort of trust thing wrapped around this conversation, and I'm just supposed to trust that it will all show up when it's supposed to. So we all are walking around with this idea that we all, not just those of us who are listening to this conversation this morning, but everybody else on the planet, right? We are walking around with this idea that we are people here, you know, to go to work, to have children, to be in relationships, all of this kind of stuff, and really no idea that we are divine um, sparks or divine beings, divine selves, true selves, that we are souls having an experience. And one of the things I heard this morning. Um, was that we are, from the moment we are born, we are fed a ton of lies. And they're not lies like the kind of lies that, you know, you know you're backed into a corner and 
You have to tell a lie in order to get out of it. These are the lies that we are told that our parents didn't even know that they were telling us lies. They had no idea. They were lied to as well. They were given this, um, this information and was basically just told to pass it on. And that information is that we are here having a life that we kind of do our work and we, you know, have children or we don't have children and we get educations. We do all of these things um, in the world and that that's what it is, that that's what we're here for. Good morning, Eva. It's great to see you. But in fact, there is something more going on. And those lies are the things that we're trying to move, the things that we're trying to wade through. It's like we're swimming in a, in a great big um, pond and we are moving that um, out of the way so we can get to the part that says, that's not the truth of me. That's not who I am. And I guess this is really my own thing that I have been doing, trying to move more of what is not the truth of me. And so that's why it showed up. And I wanted to pass this on. Maybe it'll make a little bit of a difference for you as well. So, you know, those, um, those lies that we're told are the things not only that um, whether we have a soul or don't have a soul or this is how life is led, there are so many different ways that we are lied to and that we lie, continue to lie to ourselves. So I love the analogy of the person standing in front of us and all of us are looking at the same person and it is a man, and each one of us is going to look at that person differently, that man differently. Well, he's wearing a hat, so it means that he's sneaky. He's wearing a hat. It means that he knows how to dress well. He is wearing, um, you know, really nice shoes, so of course he knows how to dress well. He has a mustache. You know, whatever it happens to be, we all have this idea um, of what it means to look like that, right? Whatever that is. And all of us are going to give a different perspective on it. Is that the truth of the man? Absolutely not. It is not the truth of him. Yes, he may have a mustache. Yes, he may be wearing a hat. But does it mean all the other things that you have ascribed to it? Absolutely not. There is nothing that is the truth of him. And if we all said different things and different ideas about who he was, we're not right. We're not wrong. They're just more of the pictures that we have about how people show up and how people behave what they look like when they dress, what that means about that. And that's just one example of the lies that we have been told. And we can take that example and apply it throughout our lives in all different ways. We look at that from the perspective of um, politics, right? We look at that from the perspective of um, economics and who we work for and, and who we trust with our money in relationships. What does that mean? If somebody has done this behavior, if someone has been divorced, then it means a certain thing. And each one of us is going to look at that differently. The idea is that none of it is the truth of the person. It is just another experience. And I love the reason why this shows up is because there is a big, um, important part of what is going on is to keep us separate, to keep us putting people into categories. Here's a category. Here's a category. Here's a category. Here's a category. 
If you have done this, then you must sit in this category. If you look like this, then you must sit in this category. And the truth of the matter is, is that we, when we strip it all down, when we get to the part, <laughs> I just saw a picture of a whole bunch of people naked. Um, when we strip that all down, when we get to this truth of all of that, you know, we are all just people having an experience, and it doesn't matter how that looks. Um, good morning, Dorothy and, and um, Kathleen and Karen. It is great to see you. We're talking about um, lies and the lies that we have been told and the lies that we continue to believe about other people is what we're talking about now. And and we're also talking about the lies that we believe about ourselves. So yes, we absolutely can look at somebody. We can look at a woman who is, you know, dressed in a be beautiful black dress, really tight and slim, and really um, thigh high boots, and um, and shows up as just bubbly and fun and interesting. You know, everybody wants to talk to her, and we make some commentary about who that person is and how they show up in the world. We all do that. We are trained to do it. It's one of those things that our parents teach us, our teachers teach us, that we hear from all sorts of adults. That is like, you know, be careful who you talk to. People who are dressed like that, people who talk like that, there are lots of statements that we all make, and we make them completely without thought. I love the way my daughter often talks about kids. She does not talk about kids as being good or bad, but she talks about kids being thoughtless. And I think it's a great word to apply to us, right? We spend a lot of time being thoughtless, being unconscious and kind of moving through our day and not realizing where we have made these um, categories, where we have separated people, where we have made decisions about who to trust and who not to trust, who to believe and who to be wary of. There's a lot of different elements to this. That is obviously just one. What I love about that example is that it shows where fear shows up for us. What did our um, parents teach us? Hold my hand. You can't run across the street. It's dangerous out there. Don't talk to strangers. You know, there's a ton of things that we all taught our kids we were taught ourselves. I know I certainly um, have done that and have spent time deprogramming my kids as well, but it is absolutely cool to talk to people. That, now, the interesting part about this is we make, um, we, we make decisions about other people, but we also tell ourselves lies as well. And we were told lies from birth about ourselves, right? If you were not somebody who was born and told that you were divinely perfect exactly as you are, you were told a lie. Now, does that mean you need to go and, you know, call your parents up or whoever it is who raised you and say, oh my God, you lied to me? <laughs> Absolutely not. because they were taught that as well. And so they just passed on more of that information, right? They just continued what they knew. Good morning, uh, Melissa and Eva and Lauren. It's great to see you all. We're talking about the lies that we are told, the lies that we are told about other people, but the lies that we're told about ourselves. I did not grow up with the idea that I was divinely perfect. I certainly grew up with an idea that I was 
made in the image of God. I had some religion um, around me growing up, but it was often that programming. Good morning, Laura. It's great to see you. It was often the programming that said, this is what it looks like to believe in God. And my parents did not tell me that I was divinely perfect, that everything that I said, that everything I did was exactly the way it was supposed to be. It's really interesting because there's a ton of um, information that is coming in, a ton of gifts that are coming in. It's going to be one of those days where there's going to be a lot of gifts. But this one is um, the Christ consciousness that is coming in. And it's really, um, it, it's, um, it's a beautiful frequency because it's about forgiveness. It is about us forgiving ourselves for not remembering that we are divinely perfect, that everything that we do is exactly as it's supposed to be done. I spent the weekend looking at all the different ways that I have screwed up, things that I could be doing differently, things that I should be stepping into and doing more of and being more aware of. And it's beautiful that this Christ consciousness is coming in, this forgiveness frequency to start moving more of that. Let me beat myself up and let me believe the lies that I tell myself. So I don't know about you, but I'm sure you can come up with a couple of lies that you have told yourself. Maybe you're somebody who looks in the mirror and tells yourself that you need to lose weight or that you need to get your hair done or that you need to go to the gym more or some other thing that you tell yourself. It's quite possible that you are somebody who also tells yourself lies about who you are and what you are up to. Good morning, Kate. It's great to see you who you are and what you are up to. It's quite possible that you are busy telling yourself that you are not a powerful being of light, that you are busy telling yourself that you can't possibly heal somebody, that you can't possibly love somebody, that you can't possibly make a difference in the world. How amazing is that? that we walk around in this fog, in this belief system that says we are not powerful beings of light that can make a difference in the world. Wow, how is that possible that that can happen? That we are not making a difference just by being here, right? For those of you who are not healers, who are not building a business and putting something together and teaching people and doing things like that. For those of you who are out there as, you know, teachers in schools or you're out there, you know, um, playing, because I know Robin is here and you know that you're, that you're playing for a living or, or you're being a nurse or you're being a secretary or you're being a doctor or any number of other things. For those of you who are out there um, being in the world, you too are doing this healing work. You too are out there making a difference in the world. And it does not have to look like the way I do it or the way your neighbor does it or the way your sister or your mom or anybody else in the world does it because that's part of the lie. The lie is that you are not divinely perfect exactly as you were born, that you are not doing it right because you laid in bed all day yesterday. Good morning, Susan. I guess that's my own stuff, right? I didn't lay in bed all day, but I did have one of those days. And it would be very easy for me to say, I'm not doing it. I don't know why I think I can do any of this stuff. I don't know why I think I can connect with 
my own soul. I mean, really, who can really do that? I mean, really? That's another lie. That's another example of how we walk around thinking that we are not magical, that we are not capable, that there is something about us that is just not doing it right, just not showing up the way that we were meant to show up. I'm being told to say it very clearly that we are always showing up exactly as we were meant to show up, that we are not, you know, pretending to be this, and we are not um, behaving in a certain way. <laughs> there, it's really important for us to know that however we show up, if you wake up in the morning and you are pissed off, and you have no idea why you're pissed off, but you are angry, and you let everybody who crosses your path know that you're ticked off and, and upset, that is exactly perfect. That is the way that you are supposed to be showing up. Hey, Laura, it is great to see you. Um, you're supposed to show up angry and mad. And then you're supposed to, supposed to, ask for help. Ask for something to move that out of the way, to remember that that is a lie. That pissed off, angry, upset, hurt is a lie. It is not the truth of you. You are so much more than that. But that is showing up for you to see it and to remember that you can move that stuff. And every single person that ever watches this video, whether you have ever taken a class with me or a class with um, Karen Torres or a class about mastery, whether you have ever taken a class, you all have the ability to ask for help. You all have the ability to send more love out into the world, to make this shift, to make a difference. It's one of the things when I was walking this morning that it actually stopped me for a moment to just sit and realize that we are all capable of this. It's not just the people who have um, taken this class or done this particular thing. It is every single person on the planet that has the ability to make the shifts, to make the changes, to put more love out into the field. It is not something that is denied anyone on the planet. It was so cool because I was starting to, as I was getting this information, I was going through the map on, of the world. And when I was going through Africa, when I was going through Asia, it was like, yes, yes, yes. Even that place, even those people, even the, the people who don't know anything about this stuff. Yes, yes, yes. They are all people who are here to change the world, who are here available to love to put more love out into the field. It is not something that is denied anybody on the planet. And that's one of the lies that we have been told, that only certain people can do this, or only certain people um, are gifted with this particular aspect. And the truth of the matter is, is that all of us are gifted with the ability to change the world, with the ability to make a difference. We are all getting this information. I love, love, love that that's how it shows up. You know, I had someone this weekend who gave me, um, asked me a ton of questions, just one question after another, and but how is this possible? And why is this the case? And how could that have happened? And why would God allow that to happen? And it was just um, question after question after question. And I love that 
I was inundated, literally inundated with questions because it was an opportunity for me to see that there are so many of us who forget who we are. There are so many of us who believe the lies that we have been told. And for those of us who, you know, for those of you who have had this conversation and understand the idea of the low frequencies in our bodies, we have a ton of low frequencies in our bodies that are constantly lying to us, that are constantly telling us that we are not capable, that we are angry, that we are unconscious, that we're not worthy of, of being able to do anything to change the world. It's the other part of the lie that I was given to talk about is that we have these thoughts. It's the only way I can describe them for those of you who um, who don't use the language of low frequencies or beings, we have these thoughts that are constantly telling us that we are not good enough, that we do not have the abilities that we think we do, or that there is something wrong with us. And that part of ourselves, that part of the conversation that goes on in our head is the part that we want to continually ask for assistance and help with. Can I move more of that stuff out? Because that's not working for me anymore. I don't want to believe the lies anymore. I want to know that I'm divinely perfect, that I have done what I am here to do, that I am continuing to do what I'm here to do. And I love that that is the ultimate message, that we are doing what we are here to do your life is happening exactly as it's supposed to. You didn't screw it up. You didn't make a wrong decision. You didn't like not hear something. You are completely moving at the speed that you're supposed to. It is all unwrapping exactly as it's supposed to. And it's such a beautiful message for us to remember. The last piece is this piece um, about freedom. And I love that we just had July 4th and we celebrated freedom in America. I don't know that everybody sees freedom in the same way, but this is tied to the aspect of the lies, that we can be free of the lies. We can be free of the way that we look at people and the way we make decisions and what we believe about ourselves. And it is a key code. I am free. I am free. I am free. And I love when people say, but well, why do you say it three times? And I, there's actually a very logical reason that everything is more powerful in threes. But you know what I love? I love that when I say it three times, I am hearing it and believing it more and more that I personally need to hear it three times so that I, the first time I'm like, are you paying attention? The second time I'm like, what did you say? And the third time I'm like, oh, yes, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. So um, I want to give you that gift to know that you can say, I am free, I am free, I am free. And you can start to step out, step out of the lies that you have been told, step out of the lies that you tell yourself, and step into more freedom and more understanding of who you are. It's such a beautiful opportunity for all of us, and it's a beautiful gift that I am excited to share with you. I hope you have a great week and um, really enjoy yourself. And if there's anything I can do for you, please feel free to send me a message. Take care.